Hello everyone, Luke Ford Smith here. It is the last Saturday of February, so let's do the final quickie reading of February. So this reading will be about the Chris Can documentary by Sakimo. This article is about Sakimo's documentary on Chris for his interview with Chris C. Sakimo. But we're going to read this one, um, starting off with some quotes. I'd like to thank everyone for helping me get through these last few hectic weeks, and that was Sakimo. I give it a thumbs down on YouTube. I feel like, like, like it's about 45% hellish out of the whole hour, and that was Chris for reviewing it. I'm guessing. <coughs> Chris and Wesson Chandler is an unofficial fan-made documentary film based on Chris's life from his birth to January to 2015. Directed and created by Kiwi Farms member. Spy Lobster, also known as Sakimo, on YouTube, it was successfully completed and released to YouTube on the 2nd of February 2015. Made in Adobe Premiere as a high school project, the film takes a look at Chris's troubled life in a, in a mostly serious and, fashionable, and factual fashion, utilising photos, videos and interviews that all Although it does have its moments of comedy, notably the film presents no an, no bias towards Chris as as a whole. At the end, it leaves it up to up to the viewer to decide how they feel about Chris as a whole. Sajamo has since uploaded another video showing his teachers mostly positive responses towards the video. The, doc the documentary was highly anticipated and it was first announced on the farms. It was the first, the, very fa the, first the very first actual film produced about Chris. Previously they were only fake movie trailers made of Chris. Upon release Chris and Rans Resident Candler was well received, gaining over a million views and 20,000 likes as of September 2017. Making it one of the most views video, viewed videos in CWC chronology. The success of the film less led to Sakimo confirming that a sequel is definitely happen, happening. I don't think that actually happened at the end. The film features Still Alive from Portal as its ending theme. While Still Alive is a song primarily sung about the, about the ending of the game and the character of GLaDOS herself, the, lyri the lyrics of the song take, take on a strangely fitting and bittersweet so tone in the context of Chris's life. The lyrics that, l lyrics that serve an exa as an example of this are there are no sense of there, there is there, there's no sense of crying over every mistake and I prefer to stay inside despite its inclusion Sakimo has stated that he is not a big fan of Portal. Chris's response, uh, my tears rolled into the turby, you know, as Chris recounts viewing the documentary. According to Chris, he was aware of the documentary's existence for some time, but withheld from watching it, as he believed it it would prove enduring. During to, indeed, in 2016, Chris expressed knowledge of the video's existence in the bra Brave Vig Brave interviews, calling it in insensitive. In mid September 2017, artist Mary Reverie Re Re interviewed Chris for his latest Internet Dream Lounge podcast. During the first recording, Mary Rever re remarked on Chris's status on the internet, labelling him as a legend. Chris questioned the label to which Mary Rever attributed the pentiful documentation of his life. The podcast interview would motivate Chris to view Sakimo's film with the opt optimism that it may offer a positive response. On the 22nd of September, Chris viewed the documentary. He refused to watch the he refused he refu refused to watch the documentary, op opting instead to listen via his iPod. Okay, so he, he only listened to it, not actually um, watched it. Despite 
despite his precaution, the film was an emotional experience. In particular, he noted feeling sentimental for his life before 2004, continuing to continuing through the remainder of the video beyond his 20, 2007 discovery. Chris did not tolerate the content and as a result gave the video a thumbs down. Upon completing the video, Chris mentioned in an overly dramatic Facebook post that he had a hard time viewing the documentary. He wished that someone would compile a, reco a re re recorded video testimonies from everyone that, that from everyone touched by his work, kindness and efforts. In in pro in process showing that he, that that good he, he had done out, outweighed the hate. The following day, Chris offered further advice on how to improve the documentary. Chris suggested that the in interviewees be pe people. Oh, that that the interviewees. Okay, I forgot that's actually a real word. Be 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 people he whom he believes he has a positive impact on, such as the attendees of BronyCon, as well as shortening the sagas to a simple overview. He also proposed including events from 2014 to 2017 with, with, the, with the purpose of showcasing more, the more positive events in Chris's life. In summary, Chris, um, Chris, Chris's amendments would turn a non-biased production into an hour of one-sided admiration. Well, you got to look at the bad side as well as the good, you, you know. In the Internet Dream Lounge interview, Chris stated that he appreciated the complimentary documentary response video as critiqued by Sashimo's letter. So we've got some stuff here. Let's, let's just get get them up right here so you're ready to read. And 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 that, and that was it. Uh, that, that, that was it. So let's click on this one. Okay, so we only got like two. So we've got the interview as well, but... We're not we're, we're not gonna be um looking at this um yet. We're gonna be having a look at something else now. So let's go there. But let's have a look at these. I'm not going to um read them because um it's it's long. I don't really want this video to be too long. To be fair, I know it's only been seven seven minutes, but yeah. So anyway, this is the um. The tweet, the Facebook post that he has, um, that he has done. Uh, you can pause to read it if you want. I don't mind. And this is the um, another Facebook um, post. Here. You can pause to read that as well. So let's have a read of the notable events um, that happened in February two twenty twenty two. So on the third of February. Chris's incest trial was pushed back by a third continuance. On the 13th of February, in the midst of a DDoS attack against Creek Kiwi Farms, Kengal post the rest of the January, 3rd, uh, January 11th letter. On the 15th, YouTuber Bizarre Bizarre leaks a letter from early January. On the 17th, Kenneth Engelhart shares in a previously unseen letter re regarding Barb's crash of Sun Q. We already read all the letters that are up to date by now. And on the 24th, Chris turns 40 in jail. So that was it for um for this dead short video. Kept it under 10 minutes. Um, tomorrow will be a quick uh, no will be a um a weekly recap video. Um, and on Monday will be an update video for March and I'm doing the update video a bit earlier than planned but um, I plan to start another project in um, early March so don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time